So last week I came across this little book. That's a very famous book and that I've had it for years and years now. And I remember the first time that I read it, one of the things that I thought about this book is how it's full of cliches. But when you come to think of it, how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie probably isn't full of cliches. The thing is, it was the first time that those cliches were put to work and most people know them because of the book. So it's not that Dale Carnegie put a bunch of cliches into his book, it's that he is a victim of his own success. So he got so famous and people know so much and have talked so much about the gold in this book that many of those things became a cliche. So before we start, welcome. I'm Gabe. This is the Rock and Roll Success. We have a YouTube channel slash podcast a newsletter, and I'm writing my own book on how to rock your own road towards your success, according to your own definition. So as I was saying, how to influence friends and how to win friends, actually, and influence people. It's a very interesting book, and it's full of, of gold and full of real tips that many people have forgotten about. Actually, most people have forgotten about. You know, those things that your grandpa used to say, like, you must look people in the eye, you must ask them about them, you must shake their hands, right? And most people end up forgetting them and thinking, oh, that's how they did it back in the day. But actually, it's not. Actually, People are still people, even if we have technology, even if we have AI, whatever we end up inventing down the line. As long as we're still blood and flesh, blood, sweat, and tears, as Winston Churchill used to say, we're still people. We're still emotional beings. We're not rational. That's one of the things that I've noted down here somewhere. People are not actually rational beings we are emotional so i this is a habit that i have of noting down things so while you're reading a book you should do this as well like underline stuff and note down the thoughts that you're having so yeah i found it so people are not logical people are emotional they're susceptible to pride and to vanity and forgiveness is magnanimous. So this is what I wrote in Portuguese over here. And forgiving is magnanimous. And this was something that I, I was looking at in the first chapter of the book, the first actual chapter, because it, it begins talking a little bit about Dale Carnegie's history, like story of his life and how he was a farm boy that, his dad used to, to raise those blue ribbon pigs, those like prize winning pigs. And they were super, um, yeah, they were super proud about the pigs. But anyways, it starts talking about how you complimenting people for doing the right thing or the thing that you want them to do, you giving them a sincere compliment, not just like grabbing their balls and just saying what they want to hear. No, a sincere compliment. When you do that, and people can notice, they can tell the difference between a sincere compliment and when you're just trying to make them happy some way. You know, like those guys at your office that I'm sure that they go to the boss and, oh, boss, you're awesome. You're the best, blah, 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 blah. No, not like that. So when you give them a sincere compliment, they will react much more positively than if you give them criticism when they do the wrong thing. So one of the instances in this book, he talks about this guy that wasn't doing his job properly, but there was this specific task, a little minor thing that he did well. And so his boss, she started complimenting him on him doing well on that specific little task that wasn't even very important. But by doing this, he started feeling proud of it. He started 
regaining his confidence about his job. So he wanted to receive more compliments. So he was very, very good at that. And he also tried to spill over that confidence, to spill over that competence of his into other aspects of the job. So little by little, he started becoming the best person at the office because it was complimented by something minute, like say someone complimented you on your handwriting or wow, you're, you're very good at listening. You're very good at taking notes, whatever it is. And now you want to do a little better. You want to receive that praise again. And so you start little by little getting a little better. It's like the Japanese concept of Kaizen. So doing a little better every day. And this is much better than criticism. So if you get back to that Pavlovian experiment, so, you know, what's his name again? Ivan Pavlov. So he had the fury of conditioning and he worked with dogs and trying to condition animals to do the things that we wanted. So training animals. And he conditioned the dogs that every time that he would ring a bell, they would see the image of um, roasted chicken. So every time he gave them roasted chicken, he would ring the bell. So little by little, they started conditioning their brain to think that when they heard the bell, they would get chicken. So after a while, even if he didn't give them the chicken, but he rang the bell, the dogs would salivate. So the dogs would be eager for the chicken. So that's the thing about associative conditioning. You condition the person to have some type of reward if they do some type of, if, if they do the thing that you want them to do. In this case, it was giving them the roasted chicken every time they, that he rang the bell. And this ended up causing them to salivate. But you can do this with anything, you don't need to become a dog whisperer. So you know what's something that people really crave, the thing that most people crave, but they don't get it. The thing that most people look for, but they don't find it. And it's not about money. It's not about food. It's not about sex. It's simply a sense of importance. So people want to feel important, but usually they don't get to feel important. They, even at their own home, many times they don't get that feeling. They don't feel like they are acknowledged at their job. And this is one of the things that made Andrew Carnegie, who was one of the richest men of his time, he, play, he paid his assistant or yeah, I wouldn't say an assistant, but he ended up becoming the guy who ran a lot of his businesses, Charles Schwab, and he played he paid him a millionaire salary at a time in which people would have like the average salary for the factory men at Carnegie's. And Dale Carnegie and Andrew Carnegie are not related. Just just a parenthesis. But the regular Joe at the time was paid $50 a week and Charles Schwab, Charles Schwab was paid more than $1 million a year. So you can see the difference. And when he was asked about this, and we have the story in this book, like why, why the hell does Andrew Carnegie pay you so much? And he said, look, I'm not the smartest guy in the factory. I'm not the guy who knows everything about steel or everything about railroads, but you know what I'm very good at? My strongest suit? My strongest suit is to, is my ability to awaken the enthusiasm among my man. So the most efficient means to develop the best in the man is by appreciation and encouragement. Simple as that. The guy was paid a millionaire salary at a time that people were making 2,500 a year. And he was doing this because he was able to, by encouragement and appreciation, he would generate enthusiasm in his men. So he, his men would work much better 
they were eager to come to work and do the best they could. And little by little, if you do this every day, your team will become exponentially better. And if you can do this, he was applying in this case, uh, not well, the capital leverage was Andrew Carnegie's pretty much. But in this case, he was using the human capital to the best of their ability. So he was leveraging this human capital. And by doing this, he was also leveraging the physical capital and the, the monetary capital as well. So how do you make people feel important so that you can, well, first of all, win friends and influence them, but to make them happier, to make them work better, to make, well, how can I help you? If we were thinking about this, like how can I influence you to be better, to be happier, to be closer to your purpose? Because at the end of the day, that's what I'm doing here. That's what I want to do here to help you unleash your inner rock star and unleashing your inner rock star is my way of saying to be the best version of yourself, to be the most accomplished version of yourself that has time to be with your family, has time to do your hobbies, has time to do the the thing that you were put in this world to do, basically. So some of the things that Charlie Schwab said that you can do and that are here in the book, so you can praise people publicly, especially because if you praise someone in front of the rest of the team, it's it's something else. You can offer them distinctions. You can hand prizes to the best performer. So going back to the pigs that Dale Carnegie's family had and how they used to win those ribbons. So when you're giving ribbons to a pig, it's not the pig that's going to be happy about it. Like the pig doesn't care, but the farmer will be super happy. The same thing with someone that's working with you. If you give them some sort of prize for the, the best sales man or woman in my team or the best, whatever it is, the best project in our company this year, people will be happy because they will feel acknowledged. And by feeling acknowledged, they're more prone to staying with your company. They're more prone to liking you. They're more prone to doing their best day in and day out. So that's the thing about praise and about conditioning people to do their best. So you, instead of offering criticism when they don't do what you want them to do you offer praise when they do what you offer when you what you want them to do like they do in sea world giving fish to the dolphins and the whales another thing that's interesting in this book is that no one is the villain in their own story and what does this mean well if you think of al capone when he was caught after many, many years of the prohibition and used to sell booze to people, even when it was prohibited, he was one of the mafia bosses. And when he was caught and he was actually caught by the tax man, it wasn't even because of the crimes that he actually committed. I'm not saying that it wasn't crime. You guys know what I mean, I think. So he he saw himself as an underappreciated public benefactor. He didn't see himself as a mafia boss. He just thought that he was trying to bring joy to the people. And if even one of the most dreaded criminals wholeheartedly believed that he was doing the right thing, what makes you think that criticism can change someone's mind? It can't. When you criticize someone, you end up hurting their ego. You end up making them less prone to want to help you. They, you cause people to get resented. And when people start feeding that resentment inside, they will be less and less inclined to do what you want them to do. Because as I said before, humans are not rational. We are emotional. We're susceptible to pride, to vanity. So don't criticize, don't condemn, don't complain. Forgiveness is magnanimous, as I said before. And finally, this book is, I mean, it's not super long. 
It's actually quite short if you think of it, but it's full of gold. And even one of the things that Dale Carnegie says in the beginning of the book is that you should apply everything that you so you read each chapter and you should try to apply it in your own life. You shouldn't just read it because if you just read it and don't try to apply the things that are here, you really won't learn. You, you need to really embrace the lessons in this book. So even if they seem like, oh, they're so simple, they're so cliche, they aren't. They are actually very valuable if, if you try to apply them. So another thing, the last one that I'll put in this video and please, while we're at it, please like, subscribe, comment, talk about this book if you've read it or another book that's helped you with influence, with social skills, whatever it is, with public speaking. So if you want to go fishing, what do you put on your fishing rod? What bait do you use? So for instance, I love lemon pie. But if I want to go fishing, should I put lemon pie on my fishing rod? No, probably not. Same thing goes for you. There's probably your favorite food that you love. Pizza, lasagna, barbecue, tacos, whatever it is. You have a favorite food. But if you want to go fish, you can't put your favorite food on the bait. You need to bait the fish with worms, with another fish, with something that the fish that you want to catch will like. So that's the thing with people as well. You need to think what, what's in it for them. What do they want? Not what you want or what you would want in their situation. You need to try to really see the world through their eyes and try to really picture what do they really want? Because that's what people want at the end of the day they end up thinking consciously or not what's in it for them even when you think of something like oh i'm going to give some money to charity at the end of the day you're thinking what's in it for you because you're thinking well i'll think that i did something for the world i made the world a better place so i'll feel better about myself or i'll tell my wife that i put on a donation and she will think that I'm a good man. So then I'll feel better because my wife appreciates me. So there's always something, even if marginally selfish, about everything that we do. And that's the thing. You need to find a win-win situation. That's negotiation in a nutshell. So if it's about a client, you need to think what's in it for him so that you can give him an unbelievable offer. Or if it's with your daughter, for instance, that doesn't want to go to sleep at the time that you want her to go to sleep, you need to find a win-win situation so that she can go to sleep at the time that you want her to. So slightly manipulate her maybe, but do the thing that will help you get what you want. So. In the end of the day, not not done yet, but almost, but please bear with me for a couple more minutes. So the secret to success in Henry Ford's words, and come on, Henry Ford is one of the most successful people ever, right? He said, if there is any one secret to success, it lies in the ability to get the other person's point of view and see things from that person's angle as well as from your own. So you need to see things through the angle of other people if you want to be successful and this is one of the nutshells one of the most important concepts ever if you can't see the world through other people's views you will never be able to accomplish as much success as you want to because at the end of the day it's all about influence it's all about selling an idea it's all about selling people on yourself like, why should they be friends with you? Well, because you are awesome. You are someone that's funny. You're someone that has good ideas. You're someone that makes them feel good. You're always selling yourself, even if you don't think so. Even if you don't. Even if you think you're a bad salesperson, 
you probably already know how to sell yourself, at least one way or another. So if you can see the world through another people, another person's point of view and genuinely try to help them, you'll hold a huge competitive advantage because most people just look at what's in it for them. You're not genuinely trying to look at what your client wants, at what they need. And sometimes what they think they want isn't what they actually want, what they actually need. So you need to help them go through the journey to discover it. So you need to awaken this burning desire and find out what they truly want. And sometimes they don't know what they truly want. So you need to help them find what's that burning, burning desire that, you know, that offer that they just can't refuse. Like Don Corleone used to say, you need to make an offer that they can't refuse. And of course, I'm not talking about mafia boss kind of offers, but I'm talking about a, an offer that's so good that they would feel stupid saying no to this. So thank you for watching this. Please share it with your friends that need to know more about this book. And please subscribe to the Rock and Roll to Success. I'm always talking about these topics, about negotiation, about uh, public speaking, about basically about unleashing your inner rock star, about having that rock star mentality. So thank you for watching and let's go, go, go.